The following show features episodic breakdowns of Jackass, either performed by professionals or under the supervision of professionals. For your safety, avoid listening to this podcast at all times. Hi, I'm Mikey Aaronworth. I'm Jason Wellwood. And I'm Chris Aaronworth. Welcome to Jackass. Welcome to Jackass. It's the podcast where we're on a path of destruction through every single episode of Jackass. We're three lifelong fans of the show reliving the belly laughs, bad ideas, and broken bones. And guys, I don't even know what the hell we're doing today. Normally I have a plan. Normally right. I have a thought. But mm-hmm. we're doing something a little bit different. And I'm just going to pass Yeah, we blindfolded li- Chris. We, we blindfolded him, put him in a van like he was Brad Pitt, and uh, kidnapped him in front of a hot dog stand. <laughs> Did he turn me into like one of those like night monkeys? Yeah, we turned you into a night monkey and we made sure that uh, every time a camera was by, you took off the mask and brushed your hair back so that they knew it was actually you in the night monkey costume. <laughs> um, uh, no, so so uh, thank, thanks for, for tuning to me. What Chris means by the fact that he doesn't know what we're doing today, uh, we decided to do something a little bit different. Look, we had a discussion about what to do with our next few episodes. Like we've said in the past couple episodes, we've had a lot of requests to do things like uh, 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 Haggard, which again, we realize a lot lot of you are requesting that and we're pretty sure it's just because you want us to suffer um unless there oh, are yeah, actually okay. haggard fans out there like hit no. us up if that's uh-uh. the case i Doesn't don't exist. i i agree i don't know that it does uh uh you know the dude sins things like that maybe another episode of wild boys maybe another season of of viva la bam or something along those lines but before we get started on a brand new project uh uh because we're scheduling something again we're, we're working on something pretty special that we've been hinting at for a little while before we get started on that project uh we're kind of feeling the time and, and what i found is is that we're sort of in this limbo right now in the podcast that's similar to the limbo that we're in as fans of Jackass, right? We just had Jackass Forever and Jackass 4.5 has ended as well. Um, it's almost like when Christmas Eve ends and you're like, well, don't worry, we still have Christmas morning. And then uh, that's like Jackass Forever and Jackass 4.5. 4.5 is over and there's like this great lull. So what I'd like to do is ask you guys and have just a general conversation and catch up on what we're doing to fill our time with uh, an absence of Jackass. Now, before we get into that, Jay, you missed last week when we did our draft of uh, if we if we had to start from scratch with our Jackass crew and pick from regular people in pop culture, we picked five members. Uh, you weren't there for that. And I'd be curious, Jay, do you have a list of five members uh, of, of Jackass if you had to start the crew over from scratch who, who you'd go with? Sure, I can give you a quick list. And I would say that this past, this, um, what did you call it? Like we're in limbo right now? Yeah. I'd say it's kind of like post busting a nut where you just kind of like, Oh, what the fuck did I just do? And you just lay there in shame. <laughs> you regret having Sweaty. watched Jackass, though? <laughs> never, never. The shame it, and sweat, I guess, because that's my default state of being. But uh, uh-huh. yeah. I got gotcha. you. But uh, yeah, for last week, you guys give me give the audience just give a quick recap. Who did you pick? Fire it off real quick, Mikey. All right, I'll start off. I had, as my Johnny Knoxville, I had Jack Black. As my Danger Aaron, I had uh, McLovin. Uh, Christopher Mintz Plast, the guy who plays McLovin, because who wouldn't want to bully that guy? As my Bam Margera, I had Super Dave Osborne, because Chris yeah. decided that we could include dead people in it. As sure. my uh, Chris Pontius, I had Danny McBride, because I feel I think he'd be the best hang and he wouldn't have to do any stunts. And as my Steve-O, I had uh, Buster Keaton. <laughs> I had I had uh, star of the silver screen Buster Keaton, who's known for making his own stunts and doing some pretty wild shit. Uh, uh, my team was one that Chris didn't appreciate, uh, but Chris was a well, lazy team. He picked from Chris, Chris told me he no. dominated you I, off I, mic. He Jay, said that uh, Jay will be the choice of this. Okay. So he'll, he'll see who dominates it because this was utter domination. Mikey's. Also, let me just clarify. Mikey chose to make his picks based on specific actual characters. That was not the format. I actually (laughs) was thinking along the lines of you can't recreate such an organic beauty situation. So you do mm-hmm. need to fill in with your new people. So yeah, with people when who he says, oh, this is my body and people are trying to ju- you know, justify this or this or that, that's bullshit. He's just trying to get a little brownie points. My first pick was Johnny Knoxville's hero, Evil Knievel, mm-hmm. which oh, basically won it right there for me. My second pick was Eric I'll, Andre. I'll say, before you go on, let me say this. We, we did not agree that you could do dead people. Uh, and, and I, of what course, would have started with you. You said you could pick people in their prime. In their prime who are still alive. Like, you can't did, just pick did, a did dead you, did person. Did you say that? Did you say it when they're still alive or no? How is a dead person supposed to be on your team? 
Like I'm fine. I, I'm fine I making said the change. In his prime. I'm fine making the change, and I had. Like fun. you had more dead people on your team than I did, so I don't know what the fuck you're talking but about. That's only because I had to change to to. Look at this if, fucking guy if, making if excuses, knew, even with his excuses. <laughs> he's still so fucking beat. Evil can evil. Said, I said fire him off. This is not firing him off exactly. at all. This is. Evil so, Knievel would have been anyone's Evil number one is choice. The best pick. No, because you wouldn't have thought about it because you're not smart enough. Uh huh. Evil Knievel. Oh, and do you know who Mikey's person was before I let him switch his last pick? Donald Trump. <laughs> yeah, that would be what? hilarious. Donald Trump. It would be hilarious to see you Donald get Trump that as a guy member to do of anything. No, no, exactly. but Jay, the, the conceit was that whoever you draft is is game for it. You don't have to convince them to do they're it. Game, they're game to be part of jackass, but it doesn't mean they're game to do all these wacky stunts. You still have to have their embodied character to kind of shine in those types of areas. No, it'd be like a Kenny Rogers jackass, like Kenny Rogers from Mad TV. Remember that? Like, they're in on it. They're in there for it. All right. Anyways, let me continue to the dream team. So, Evil Knievel, Eric Andre, then I had... Fuck, man. Why can I never remember these things? I'm it's such, such a good dummy. team that you can't even remember who's on it. No, because there's just so much gold, right? It's distracting. <laughs> I had Burt Kreischer, the comedian, who would be the best fucking hang. Everybody would love him around. He's done stunts on the Travel Channel. He's going to get everybody hyped up, drinking beers. Pure comic relief, just like a Chris Pontius. He's always got a shirt off, too. Top-notch guy. Then I also had... Tyler, the creator. Tyler, the creator. Would be an absolute perfect pick. Chris, Jay's is, favorite guy. I shouted your, out for Jay. Is that your only definition? Like, that's the only criteria to be a top-notch guy is that you just have <laughs> to not be wearing a shirt? Is that... <laughs> I mean, it, it works for a lot it. of the jackass guys. Because you're halfway there already, I can see, so... Yeah, he is. He's got... Do you remember... Hey, remember, Jay, a couple weeks ago, Chris made what? fun of me for having three buttons undone, and now he comes copying his younger brother as though he's trying to be just as cool no, as him? I got oh, five he's, buttons undone. Exactly. Uh, he's one up in you, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. You're a four-incher. I'm a five-incher. You know what I mean? Um, and my final pick, even though I originally picked uh, Yerpy from... Um, the Dudesons. From the Dudesons, but I, was, I felt my team was too strong. I had to dial it back, and I ended up taking David Arquette. Because mm-hmm. if you've seen that documentary, no one could kill David Arquette when he does the death match in wrestling. He is one of the most hardcore committed people in the game. I like the David Arquette pick. Mm-hmm. I got to be honest. I just here's the thing. I honestly believe that in terms of creativity, I had the better team. Uh, Chris, you had a solid team, but they were all like very Dude, obvious. Picks. I resurrected the fucking dead, bro. <laughs> that's, <laughs> that's creative as fuck. That's OK. Jay, what uh, what would your team be? Do you have some time to put one together? I did, I did, and I thought long and hard about this, guys. Like, this this could be, it's almost, once you hear it, I almost guarantee you're going to think, why the fuck didn't I think of that? It's almost so obvious. I'm picking, now, I'm doing this a bit unorthodox, like, it's going to be a group. My first entry is actually a group, because I can't just fire them off one by one separately. It has to be as a team. This is some real Canadian representation here. A trio of three of, oh, I know it's your fucking favorites. It's... Ricky, oh. it's Julian, oh. and Bubbles. It's <laughs> the fucking so trailer good. park boys. That's so good, man. I it's a match like made that. in heaven. Yeah, it has to be. Like, I mean, just think of the shit they could do and they could get away with. You got, you got Ricky's wit and and the one liners he'd be firing off. He's he's, I guess, kind of like a Pontius in some ways. He's there for uh, for show mostly. I think and be Julian, more of a Always the stud. He could be more of a poopies. That's probably a better connection there. But Julian, always the stud. He He's, uh, you know, I'm sure he'd probably get in there. And I feel like he'd be more of the Knoxville of the group. Yeah. He'd be willing to step up and do something radical. And then you got Bubbles, who's just like, he'd do some unorthodox, like, fucking Steve-O shit. You know, he'd do something really wild and out there. But even just having those guys hanging out on the crew, like, they would fucking fit right in. Like, you wouldn't even fucking bat an eyelash with those I like that I wonder what the crossover of jackass fans to uh, uh, trailer park boys would be I feel like there's a pretty pretty decent crossover hey dude it's gotta be I mean uh, and if you haven't seen that show I know we have a lot of American listeners and I tend to find that like if you're a Canadian you've you know of the trailer park boys oh they blew up in the states you'd be surprised they did yeah 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 they're they're massive in the states now yeah I'm hoping then that uh, there's some representation over there if you haven't watched them before just go watch the show it's fucking brilliant it's just a fucking brilliant, brilliant show. And you wouldn't think it at first glance, but uh, there's some magic in the writing of that fucking, of that program. But yeah, I still have two more to go. And uh, this past weekend, boys, I went to a wrestling event here in Cowtown, the Romero Rumble outside of a distillery. 
it was a beautiful sunny fucking day and we we got some beers in us and yelled at the wrestlers which i must say is if you ever get to go to a wrestling event <laughs> that is great. the only fucking sport to quote the guy who was doing i read an article of the guy who was actually doing the ring announcing at that event and he said something along the lines of uh wrestling is the only sport that you can go to where you can yell at the talent and they will get right back in your face and yell back at you i like that Give him the old dick twist. <laughs> you remember that meme? <laughs> no, what was that from? Oh, some guy said he's like at some like fighting fighting event, and the guy behind him is going nuts. He's like, kill him, give him, get him down. You know the old dick twist. The guy's like, oh man, <laughs> you never seen that? Clip? No, I don't it's think so. so good. But now I know Classic where you get all your right? wrestling moves from. Uh, yeah. Jay, give us your number four but, and five. So the number four and five are tied to wrestling because, as I was saying, you know like wrestlers are fucking open for anything but you need the right type of wrestler to be a jackass crewman and i think the legendary the one and only mick foley he was on my honorable mentions that's a great pick he would show up and he would fucking deliver no questions Mm -hmm. asked even in his old age i'm sure he'd still be down to do something wild so i'd like to see mick foley on the crew and i felt because i was in a bit of a wrestling mood we throw one more wrestler in there and this is just a personal pick a personal favorite of mine chris benoit (laughs) (laughs) hey man as a professional wrestler much respect to benoit he was very talented (laughs) great wrestler everything else about him is uh (laughs) the guy i'm actually the opposite about that I'm the but, opposite. I, I'm not a huge fan of his wrestling. Everything else, top notch. <laughs> top notch. All right. Yikes. Uh, but no, it was not Benoit. I think I would have went along the lines of a personal favorite of mine just because I love the guy's energy. I think he'd have a good time after you get a few beers in him. It's Sammy Zane. Does that ring oh, any yeah. bells? Do I you know, know Sammy Zane. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Good old Canadian boys. I had a very fucking Canadian lineup on mine. But uh, yeah, that that's my picks. But um I don't know. What? I don't know, Chris. I would say uh, I didn't pick any dead people, so sorry to disappoint you. But uh, out of the three, we might have to leave that to a vote to the audience to decide who had the best lineup of all time. Yeah, let us uh, let us know. You can find us on Instagram at JackassPod and uh, Twitter at JackassPod as well, or you can send us an email JackassPod at gmail dot com. Uh, but that kind of sums up, puts a little button on our TV draft, as though we were to rebuild the Jackass crew from the ground up using uh, some creative members from pop culture and some very obvious ones, uh, both dead and alive. Uh, but we'll we'll move past that. I've got a question for you guys. You know, we're in this lull that we mentioned in between Jackass four point five and the promised Paramount TV series. What are you guys doing to get your jackass fix apart from from recording this podcast? Like, what are the things that you guys are doing to keep yourself going? I'm I'm hitting up the podcasts and YouTube channels. Mm-hmm. That's where yeah. I get a lot of my insight. Like everybody that listens to this knows I'm definitely the most knowledgeable jackass fan out of all the hosts for sure. What are I bring you up talking all these cool about? Stories. What do you mean? Who is okay. the first person oh, to ever shit. bring We're up not poopies? Getting into this? Are we? I, I think we're getting into this, Jay. Who was the first oh, person that ever brought up poopies? You Me. did. Be- yeah. Yeah, because I watched Shark Week. Right. Yeah, which, okay. Which, by the way... And who I- brings up all these hot facts that you guys are like, wow, I didn't oh, know about that. How Me. does... How does that have to do with jackass? Yeah, Those how does Michael facts, Schumacher like, getting yeah. in an accident? Uh, no, no, I'm not talking about the daily facts. I'm talking hmm. about the hot facts of, oh my God, did you hear Novak <laughs> and did this? Did you hear this okay. is how poopies got his nickname, et cetera, et cetera? Mm-hmm. Because I'm putting in that legwork. And I always am. I'm watching every single Steve-O channel video, listening to podcasts, all the poopy stuff. Whoever's putting it out there. Hey, question for you. Yeah. What did uh, what did Rachel Wolfson's mom do for a living? Uh, she know. was a judge. And who was her famous prosecution? Uh, O.J. Simpson. Okay, I didn't expect you to get that. Well, yeah, that's you know, true. listen, I just don't need to to flaunt it out there, Chris. That's it. I I'm confident <laughs> in my jackass knowledge. <laughs> I don't um, like to talk about it openly. I just keep it to myself. Yeah, I'm, I'm like very reserved. People. Yeah. <laughs> Chris, what are your favorite YouTube channels? Why don't you uh, listen? Not that we want to send people away from this one, but uh, what do you where do you usually go? What what are the what are the channels and the and the people that you're you're going to support for the most part? Mm, at Jackass Pod, number one. <laughs> number one with a bullet, man. With a bullet point. Um, <laughs> see, here's the thing. A lot of the Jackass guys do not really until recently they haven't built up like a following on the internet they've been kind of coasting along the lines of what they're doing making the movie money and then getting involved in other businesses and maybe to some high side hustles performances things like that it's undoubtedly has to go to steve-o he's the person that's had youtube he was the first guy to go he's making all these vlogs he's doing a lot of stuff he started his first he was like the first guy to do the podcast so 
y- you got to give credit where credit's due. Steve-O is the one guy, and this is why I think it, he was had some fairness in trying to renegotiate his contract for the mo- for the new movie is because yeah. he really is one of the only people that is keeping jackass relevant to this newer generation of people. So well, there you, you got to give him credit. You know what? It's it's interesting you say that because there was some insight that he gave on his his poopies recording when when he had poopies on his podcast where he kind of. Like he didn't linger on it, but he said he's like the reason he wasn't at the test shoots and he was obviously a glaring omission from the test shoots is because he admittedly was holding out in a contract dispute. He wanted more money. And I think that, you know, this is not to slight anyone who takes part in Jackass or involved in the production team or anything like that. But there is this mentality of we are going to underpay people because it's an honor just to be asked to be a member of Jackass. And I feel like and you could spawn a whole other career off that. Right, exactly. Steve-O is thinking, or you need me. Uh, and, you know, great, uh, thankfully for him, he's got the clout. You know, he's he's one of the, the original members of Jackass. And, and he, he's not he's not worried about losing face to the public just by holding out for a contract dispute. He's, he, he knows his worth. He's smart. And I think it's interesting as some of the newer members of Jackass come on, especially after realizing, you know, what, what's, what's out there right now is that they really didn't get paid that much for the movie. In fact, they got paid relatively little for the mm-hmm. movie. Will they then band together now that they've been introduced as newer members and say for the Paramount plus TV show, we need a higher, salary will it be like friends where uh uh, what's her name uh uh rachel uh (laughs) jennifer aniston holds out until every one of the members gets paid the equal amount i don't know steve the the quick answer to that is going to be no because when i was listening to steve-o he was talking about this on his like most recent podcast and they were like and how'd that go for you and he's like i got absolutely nothing he's like it's the first time i finally felt like i had some legs to stand on yeah and I ended up beefing with Johnny Knoxville in the process. And all said and done, I got absolutely nothing what I asked for. And that was that. So they, oh, he's wow. like, they run a very hard, like, they, they really run it tight. And it's like, you know what? Fuck you. We will get you out of this movie. We will find a replacement. I don't like hearing that from the people at the top, Same, especially man. with the ground root members. That being said, you know, as a capitalist, <laughs> I do understand that there's so much <laughs> more that's involved in marketing, <laughs> budgets, paying salaries, risk. You know, you're putting up the money. You know what I mean? So when these people are doing these things, there's a lot more risk and there's a lot more reward. I do mm-hmm. think there should be a bit more of a balance, but I, I don't do the books. I don't see what's going on. I have no idea what he made. I think he wanted more of a back end. He wanted more of like a, the royalties uh, on things going on and things yeah, along yeah. those lines. But from what I did hear... Bam came out on a rant post, and I and I don't know what's coming out of Bam's mouth these days. Like, not no knock to him if he's being realistic or if he's just kind of going on rants right now. He seems like he's going through a hard time. The amount of money he said Poopy's made off the film, yeah. If that's true, like fucking open up the bags a little bit, Knoxville and Tremaine. You guys got to fucking step it up, man. These these guys are, you know, we all love them. We. Ev- Share the wealth just a little bit. Still make your fucking millions, but you got to do a little bit better, That's in my thing. opinion. I wonder if there were a way... I don't know if this is interesting to the listener, but I'm fascinated by this. Like, contract talk specifically. You know, sign them to a smaller base amount. Pay them per stunt. Pay them a a almost like a commission structure base. I mean, you, you know, giving back-end points is not something any producer is going to want to write the talent into. But, like, there should have been a higher upside if the movie did well. And it did. It did really well. And the budget was very... Very low. And it's such a shame to hear that, you know, when Poopies was on uh, Steve-O's podcast, he's talking about how he's like basically in the red, like he didn't have any money after Jackass. And part of that is obviously he did the filming. He made his he got his his uh, signing bonus, whatever it was. And then COVID happened and it took two more years or so for the movie to come out. So he was just kind of sitting there with with nothing. It's it's a shame. I do kind of find it cool, though, that like Steve-O, who was the fucking wild card on Jackass for so long, is now the guy that we go to as like our barometer. Like, hey, how are things going in there? Well, Steve-O says this. We have a pretty good understanding that he's not quite producer level with Tremaine and Jackass, and he's not quite someone coming in just from the ground like Poopies. He's kind of there with both of the the perspectives in mind. It's, mm-hmm. it's sort of interesting jay what did, about did you hear, sorry just a quick question while, yeah. while we're on that did you hear the prank he pulled on knoxville because S- of the situation when they were kind of beefing with each other steve yeah no what did he do oh my god it's so good 
So they were just Googling around, you know, getting a little bit. They were Googling around. They were just on the internet looking up things. Couple well, of tur- turning, just turning off around. safe search so, and seeing what gifts pop up. <laughs> so it all started with no- Knoxville. Um, found out Steve-O, when they're kind of in this thing, was doing uh, cameos. Mm. And Steve-O was like making the best cameos. He was putting every effort into it all. And Knoxville and a few people set up fake cameo accounts with requests for Steve-O to do shit. Like, hey, oh, man, this yes, is the I did hear about this. I did hear about this. Yeah. And they fucking, he did all this shit for them and they gave him a bad review. And Steve-O got so fed up with this bad review because he's a sensitive guy that he quit cameo altogether. <laughs> so he was so bitched out. So then when he found out it was them, he was like scouring the internet and realized johnnyknoxville.com isn't taken. So they bought johnnyknoxville.com <laughs> and they created a site where um, it's basically, if I remember correctly, Johnny Knoxville's asshole. <laughs> and you go into Johnny Knoxville's asshole. <laughs> and fucking when you're inside his asshole, it's just memorabilia to Steve O's skateboard memorabilia. Oh, so, amazing. Amazing. So go check out johnnyknoxville.com and you're going to be in for, if you're 18 plus, because it's pretty graphic, but it's yeah. absolutely fucking hilarious. Well, folks, sometimes these professional relationships get a little complicated, you know, <laughs> these things can happen. <laughs> It always helps when you have the person you're beefing with when you have a detailed photo of their asshole to spread online. Spread. Yeah, well, we all shared ours with each other before we started this podcast. So that was like like when you uh, sign up for Scientology, they need to get dirt on you or like a, like Nexium, like that other cult where they're like, you need to give us collateral so that if you go out and do some shit, we, we can like hold hold your feet to the fire a little bit. We've done that to each other as well with pictures of, of one another's assholes. Uh, Jay, yeah. what is your uh, what have you been doing to kind of keep yourself up on on jackass in this in this little little a lull over here other than updating my uh asshole profile pic <laughs> uh that is a requirement by the way every year we're required to update because you never know there might be some changes new growth uh, right legally this is this changes. is canadian law yeah yes uh actually you should see my driver's license it's, uh, <laughs> anyway um what have i been doing to keep busy in the lull period here that's a good question uh you asked chris like which youtube channels do you frequent yeah uh let's see uh uh smosh ray william johnson uh college humor epic mealtime <laughs> that one guy who made the keyboard cat video yeah oh he's he's he's, uh, a, he's a treat now Am I making any sense to anybody? Oh, it's yeah, it's just all stuff from uh, from the early meme days. Oh, okay. That's there's like a, a moniker on that. That's like the hang on, Jay, like Jay, the attitude be, be, era of be a little YouTube. be a little what? quiet for a sec. Yeah, yeah. Do you hear that? Yeah, it was Chris, like a river. What the flowing. fuck is Chris's problem? I ask you a question. Jay takes that or Chris takes that as an excuse to get up from his from his computer, leaves his microphone on, and now we can hear him pissing in the other room. What, like, well, he's what a is, stand-up guy after all. He's a stand-up guy. Himself. Holy shit. So I guess this is what stand-up guys do on the podcast. They oh unbutton my God. their shirt and go take a big, big old piss. Wow. Hey Chris, was... don't forget to flush, buddy. And and hey, you know, you know what we didn't hear there, Jay? The what? tap turning on, so he didn't wash his hands either. I guess uh, I guess it's his place. His rules. Ask, he can do whatever Ask him he want. to put his hands in his mouth when he gets back. <laughs> he probably he'll do it. He's <laughs> he a gross. He's a sick fuck like that. Yeah. Um, no, but for real, for real. Yeah. Your question. You know what the lull is? Um, what I like to do is I like to go back into the nostalgia sometimes. I think, and uh, one thing that's been good is. Uh, actually the jackass, uh, the movie, I was actually having a conversation with somebody about whether they thought jackass one or part two or number two, sorry, was a better film. Right. Just being able to talk with people about jackass, people that were growing up in it is a delight. Uh, and I know that's not necessarily answering your question, but that's one thing that I've been doing lately is just reminiscing on the old days of like why we liked it and how it's changed are, are always good. But in terms of YouTube, you guys are a little more up up uh, to date with like the social media stuff and following people but i haven't been doing a whole lot of that one thing i do like though that is also jackass adjacent i will say is the eric andre show and i think i mentioned yeah. a couple weeks ago i've been watching a lot of that lately i'm still on that train i'll still sit down when i have a little free time and put an episode on and i'm still fucking loving it um it gives me those vibes of the old you know i'm a big tom green fan so the old yes. tom green show and i just love i just love 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 the interaction between real people and these guys going out there and just, you know, fucking with them. And Jackass has part of that in it. But one thing with Andre that I am getting a little bit worried about is his most recent season was like, what, one, two years ago it came mm-hmm. out? I wonder how long he's going to be able to keep doing this. Because in the last season, if you watched it, he's shaved his head. And I think part of that was to try to kind of 
you know, set people off so they don't recognize him as quickly. He could get away with more shit. At least in my head canon, that's what it is. Well, I mean, I'm he changes like, is his hairstyle dramatically situation? every every season, right? Like that's part of it. Like he starts okay. and he changes his band and he changes his Fair hairstyle. Enough. So it could it could be that. But I think you're right. He is going to have like, to worry about getting recognized. But yeah, well, look uh, at him when much. he's bald, though. Like it doesn't. I didn't recognize him when he first came out. Like it's it's a pretty good disguise if anything and i gotta yeah. ask though is this gonna be the borat problem for him like when they made the new borat movie he's got walking around and everyone's like oh borat i'm gonna get your fucking autograph and like, yes. shouting slogans at him and shit like how much longer could they keep up i wonder here's um, a question for you jay how much yeah. longer do you want him to do the eric andre show is it let's, is it gonna be diminishing return returns it's still good but like is it gonna be at a certain point it's it's gonna slow down a little bit it, that's just yeah. the nature of things right like even a show that i love which is unrelated to jackass but nathan for you the first season unbelievable and then it just kind of gets a little bit played out time and time again as he, as he tries to one-up himself like how many more seasons of the eric andre show yeah do you need? i don't know how many you can do but let's tie that together with jackass as well because a big staple of it is doing these like you know impromptu in public sketches and like right can they get away with it there any longer and like how much is enough is the new jackass tv show gonna just be stunts and dangerous things like that's what jackass forever primarily was is that gonna be the direction they're going because I, I feel like with the social media age it is so much harder to get away with those yeah. impromptu pranks now um but to answer your question before chris jumps in how long would i say i want eric andre's show to keep going I think you're onto something. I don't want it to end because I just mm -hmm. fucking love what he does, but I think it needs to. I think it needs to end soon too because yeah, I, I, agree. I want people to look back on something like that for years to come and just be blown away and who knows, maybe there'll be another Eric Andre grown up right now that's going to come and do something and there always the is, next right? level. Yeah. Well, like I look at him as being the next level of the Tom Green thing. So yeah, I don't know. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. It's a hard question though. That's answer. why when we were doing the draft, I took Eric Andre's because he is the creative mind amongst those things. And yes, he was one of the people that were involved in the day-to-day -day pranks. Mm -hmm. But yep. Good when point, you, Chris. Yeah, he was. He was pretty heavily involved. Yeah, but my point is he still has that ability to come up with these ideas. So yeah. if you were to bring him into the new show, maybe not as much of a in front of camera person, but someone to help develop these things. And the beauty built a new jackass. Think about the original jackasses. How many people were in that show that weren't really jackass people you know what i mean they had friends of friends yeah. they were able to get them into the sketches because they knew yes this might not work if we're involved with that so as much as we're going to see this new cast it's going to be very similar in the sense that they, i'm sure they'll have friends they bring in that people don't recognize that could at least play in on these pranks and if you get a guy like eric andre on board or some of the old people that are thinking these pranks on jackass it could go forever, right? You just need to make sure you have some fresh meat constantly coming in. And I think that's the direction of the new show, if you ask me. Well, let's let's use that as a jumping off point to talk about one, uh, one of the things that I wanted to bring up, which is, you know, the, the thing that we're all looking forward to is this Paramount Plus TV show. We're hoping we get some of the the, the same talent that we had from Jackass Forever and 4.5 in in Rachel Wolfson and Poopies and in, in Eric Menaka and in, in Jasper, Dark Shark, these people. What is it then... Uh, that you're expecting or what do you expect to see in a TV show? Is it going to be exactly like the original Jackass is this, or is it going to be a bit different? And I'll, I'll, I'll start, I think, by saying I think it has to be different. And I think if it is different, then it shows that Jackass can always be a brand that exists. It never has mm -hmm. to go away again because it's always going to grow with the times. And the way I think it grows with the times is being similar to what we get in something like jackass forever and 4.5 jay remember how we kept talking about how there was this unique element to jackass forever where this it was almost as though the movie was about being on the set of a movie it was like half of right. the stunts were about being behind the scenes of the stunt that they were filming i think that kind of that sense of like the filming of a show that you never really get to see because you're what the, the show is the filming of the show. I love that tone. And I think that works with this weird meta narrative that you get in a lot of uh, current TV shows. Are you, are you expecting something like that? Or you think we're going to get something different? Uh, man, that's a, that's a good question. I don't really know what to expect, but my, my hope would be, my hope would be that if they're going to continue, continue the show, uh, for a long time is that 
they, I just hope they don't stress out about it too much, you know, stress out about the problem and that they try things and like maybe test the waters is a good way to put it. Like, let's mm-hmm. see what we can get away with at this point in time. Like what's going to work as the old school, you know, in public sketch is going to work anymore. Or do we just stick to more dangerous things or do we find a whole new, like, do we pave new frontiers that we haven't explored yet? I just hope that if anything, like the show continues to feel fresh and that if they're going to continue doing it to avoid running it into the ground in the future Mm -hmm. or anything like that. Um, I kind of like Chris's idea. The more I think of it, you know, bring in people that maybe we don't see, have lots of guest appearances, do different things like that. Like, I don't think it has to be, here's like, I don't know, six, seven people who are the crew. We're just going to see what they do. Jackass could almost be more of like a community thing from here on out. You know? I was going to say like a variety show. Like, am I there crazy in thinking that you have the the, the cast? And like, honestly, Jay, similar to the Eric Andre show where you get these guests coming on. Sometimes they're the butt of the joke, but sometimes they're also just kind of with him for the pranks. Like every episode we have the, the, the skeleton of the Jackass crew. Maybe there's like two or three hosts per episode and it could be a mix of the old crew and the new crew. But then you get these new people, these special guests guests like the Brad Pitt episode showing up in a night monkey outfit or something like that just Mm -hmm. to always keep it fresh that means you can always plug it with fresh talent and we got that vibe in jackass forever so uh Chris I'll I'll say this again like I don't know if you think you're a fucking rock star or something you've left the recording like four times one time you went to the bathroom left your mic on and we heard you pissing and you didn't turn the faucet on so you didn't wash your hands right as I was asking the last question yeah my dick's clean bro. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's not what your doctor told me actually and can you by the way ask your doctor to stop calling me with your results I don't know why I'm uh, listed yeah. as your guardian yeah, yeah. <laughs> I should probably fire him they're supposed to be patient <laughs> confidentially unless it's at an absolute risk to society well that's what he said about your dick it was it was it was it may be clean but it's still an absolute risk to society you know what i'm having a day you know so sometimes i just need to take a breather Mm -hmm. and just chill Well, sorry sorry to uh i'm smoking a cigarette inside my condo today i've never done that your second your second cigarette inside your condo today exactly Uh, chris the question the question i asked no i I heard what you guys are saying so so uh go for it then so what what i actually think is it's actually going to be very well because we have a new generation. There's so much to pull from. You could get some of these YouTube people that are coming up that are blowing up massively and they really don't have another outlet and they also don't have a lot of direction. They, they get famous off one video and it gets insane amounts mm-hmm. of views, more views than Jackass gets, more views than these big productions get. So if you could find the right people involved in those types of things, add them into a sketch here or there, it's a mutually beneficial thing for Jackass and it could help tie Jackass to this younger generation of this YouTube comedy where these people really get a chance to blow up. Like if there's been one criticism to jackass, it's a lot of the people aren't making a shit ton of money from exactly what they're doing. Yes. They branch out. It gives them a celebrity, you know, a celebrity status and things along those lines. Like I'm sure Rachel Wolfson is, she's a great comedian. I've watched a ton of Mm -hmm. her shit, laugh my ass off, but I guarantee you she's selling more shows right now because of this extra notoriety. You know what I mean? So it, it, I, I think, there's just endless opportunities with new people coming in. You still want the stable people, but you do want to have these exciting things. It's almost like, uh, I wouldn't say pimp my ride because it was with regular people, but one of those shows where you just get like, what about Ryan Dunn's home records? Celebrities is like similar to that. <laughs> so I don't know about that either. Maybe, maybe a Nick Cannon while and out, okay. but like a cooler version of it. Right. So you're getting people in can't get that people want to see man. that might not be, actually involved in the jackass universe and it will it, the cross promotion is is what's happening right now these stars all get together and they make people like both these pages so i, I really think it's so going to work out here's the anomaly that i find with jackass though what did we like about jackass when we were kids it was counterculture and there is this whole melding of like youtube stars like the fact that machine gun kelly is in jackass forever is is like like exhibit a for what i'm about to say is like is there a point where Jackass becomes so popular that it is anti Kent, anti counterculture? You know, if all of a sudden any YouTube star comes on it and it's just like the the big the big thing, does that go against what Jackass originally stands for? I you know I don't I don't necessarily believe that, but I worry that they may delve into there because what what is YouTube at its most popular? It's the most generic shit. It all ends up becoming very similar. It's this muddled mess of shitty pranks 
outrageous behavior and and lavish luxury and all that stuff and it's like if jack if that's what jackass becomes i i would be a little bit bummed i would almost want jackass to be the antidote for that the thing to say like we always talk about we see these shitty ass pranks from these tiktok stars and youtube stars on youtube all the time the jackass crew comes and actually does it the way pranks are supposed to be done i would hope that they they maintain that standard i w- i I totally agree with that point, and it is a risk that's like needs to be willing to take. I think because I don't want Jackass to go obsolete. Yeah. Times are changing. I like we talked about the last episode. CERN, Trump's trying to save us. <laughs> if that doesn't work out, what we really need is is at least to still have some semblance of our old life. Sure. So if the, you bring in these guys, and hey, maybe maybe the flip side of the coin is it teaches these young idiots how to how to really overthink these things and actually get a bit more creative and be unique, you know, like it, regardless whether we like it or not, times are moving forward. And I would rather see Jackass be able to move mm-hmm. forward in even a little bit watered down version of it, but still get Jackass than have nothing That's at all. Fair. Yeah. Jake? What if, what if Jackass the show became the goalposts? Huh? So think of it like this. Okay. You know, the classic skate story, you want to go from kid who's skating in his neighborhood to maybe, you know, Oh, he gets picked up by the local skate shop, and now he's sponsored. And then, and then next, he's in a magazine. And then, oh, Tony Hawk's calling. And soon, before you know it, he's in the boom, boom, bum jam, skating for Tony Hawk in the biggest stage of them all, the biggest half pipe of them all, if you will. Maybe that's what Jackass becomes. Maybe it's just like a vetting process to see, hey, all you YouTubers and content creators, we want the best of the best to be invited to come on an episode of Jackass, but only the top tier get to go and beyond there. And it's like something to aspire to. You know, I, I love that point, Jay, but what is a boom, boom, bum, girl? <laughs> you, know. you know, buddy, you know, I, I actually, I like that as, as, as a, a proving grounds to go on and do bigger and better things. But like, isn't that what Jackass is right now? Is, didn't we I, just I talk guess. about how, how forever is the thing where like, that's not what's going to make you your money, but that's, what's going to make you famous and shoot you into the next yeah, level. Yeah. Like I'm just saying, open the doors though, and make it known, like yeah. promote that as like, Hey, we want the best of the best. And like, they kind of tested the waters with that, but they handpicked, you know, they went out and looked for people. What if they just opened it up and said, Hey, bring us your best and created fucking competition yeah. beyond jackass you know i almost i almost imagine i almost imagine like a like a youtube universe that jackass lives on or like you know some some uh uh, uh an ecosystem of, of videos and content where it's like this like like red bull kind of did with red bull tv where they did who is job with like the show poopy's got his start on um something like that where it's like you'll have different series with different people but it's all under this brand and as long as they keep the brand consistent and that's it's not branching out and, and diluting itself by by purposely pandering to too many people i think you can constantly have that as a bastion similar you know jay you you brought you brought up funny or die and college humor originally and that was like a like a at that time like a modern version of national lampoon like or saturday night live or mad tv like these things are meant to be in contrast to the mainstream and i think there's room for jackass to maintain that in in perpetuity because there's always going to be culture which means there's always going to be counterculture and i I think it's just i would worry that they play too close to the line and end up becoming a little bit too big you know if 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 making money is what they want then eventually they're they're going to do that but i think there's room for them to to maintain notoriety and also uh a bit of their soul without selling out too much that that'd be kind of nice to see i agree now uh uh you know we we talk a lot about the future of jackass and 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 what we expect to see and that's just like pipe dream pie in the sky kind of thing but what about the the past of jackass you know when we first set out to do this podcast uh we knew we were going to be seeing everything and it's almost a shame because i feel like we've gotten a much better handle on what it takes to break down a jackass episode i'd almost like to go back and do the first episode again and and give it its proper due because we were still kind of getting our sea legs there but were there any moments going back that maybe you didn't appreciate as a kid that watching it for the second time and giving it more of a critical eye you thought you know whether it's a stunt or a moment or a character or something like that actually landed better for you upon second viewing the bulls the bulls right because you didn't even think they were big for jackass that's an enormous (laughs) one chris tell tell the story about how you somehow missed bulls as a concept in in jackass well first and foremost you guys twisted my words Uh, oh i don't think that's true i didn't mean it the way that it came out so i still feel i have to redeem myself Mm -hmm. they are an iconic part of jackass Uh, but 
I just, uh, you know, at the beginning, it wasn't quite what it, you know, cranks out to be later on. And I think I was really invested in rating those episodes and stunts based on the specific one that was happening at that time, sure. opposed to the the nostalgia and the bigger picture that comes along with it. So, yeah, we're talking on a podcast. We talk live stream. I make a bunch of random comments. Some I appreciate, you know, some later on I go on to regret. That one was definitely... I don't regret it because that's not how I meant it. And you guys want to make me look like an asshole. <laughs> it's so not I'm taking hard to this do time though, right Chris. now. It's not very difficult. We barely no. have to put in any effort. All the other shit I talk about makes so much sense. Uh, like, you know, how Trump's going to save the world. Uh-huh. How, uh, By you know, shot out of a cannon. <laughs> shot on out of a cannon. Well, that's, yeah. that might be his time machine where he could go back <laughs> and stop CERN from ever starting. You know what I mean? Uh-huh. But, you know, it's yeah, just you took that a little things. far, but yeah. Right. This, uh, Jay, you, oh, missed, you didn't listen to the last episode. You, you no. missed you missed uh, uh, quite a quite a theory, quite a tale. Chris spun. Uh, Sounds uh, wild, though. I think yeah. Our uh, we actually yeah, had a portion of that on our YouTube channel. We released as the as the promotional clip over at at Jackass Pod on Instagram. Um, yeah, uh, was was Chris uh, kowtowing to 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 Trump uh, as he's been doing a lot lately on this podcast. I don't know if it's like, hi, my name's Chris Aaronworth, and I'm about to uh, uh, lose half of our audience, or or I guess gain his half of the audience i'm not sure all i know is that we've got an equal balance and here's a funny thing i'll say just about that post like chris you and i had kind of a funny back and forth i'm you know blatantly i don't need to hide my politics i i I hate donald trump uh uh you know that chris i know that you you uh you don't hate him but we had like a funny back and forth about about your support of him and my distaste and disdain towards him and people from both sides of the aisle were like this you you shouldn't be talking about that in this video i'm like hey guys it's two people who disagree having fun with one another how is that a bad thing what like we're both making fun of each other and ourselves like take a step back <laughs> that's exactly it yeah i'm, I'm over him and things for the fun of it and you're just being ignorant like everybody <laughs> on your side is but <laughs> my point is is look we're brothers we have a good time and People are allowed to have different opinions. And you know what? Until you actually have a chance to sit down and ask people why they think these things, instead of hating each other, you know what the world needs is more unity and Mm. more acceptance of other people. Mm. And that's what we're trying to promote over here on this Mm. podcast. Like acceptance of people on the other side of that border wall or what? Hey, Jay, what, uh, what (laughs) what, uh, what about you? What are some of the surprises you found yourself coming across, uh, uh, revisiting some of the earlier episodes of Jackass? Uh, well, the thing about corn sledding, Mikey, is that it's just, <laughs> what? I think never stronger. Uh, corn sledding, uh, season no, two, episode three of Jackass. I think one of I the I don't worst actually stunts. want to talk about it. I don't, okay. let's not go there. I don't actually want to talk about it. I Fair. appreciate, I appreciate that. Look at Mikey ever so accommodating there. Just trying to. Give me my moment to talk about one of the greatest stunts of all time. But (laughs) what I did want to say is that one thing I didn't even notice when I was a kid, and it's actually surprising to me that I didn't notice it more. I'm not going to say I didn't notice it at all, but Chris Pontius and his role being Mm. the character in a lot of these sketches where he'll be Bunny the lifeguard on duty, for example, you know, I don't know why, but like that didn't really stand out. And when we got back into this for the podcast, I realized how essential his character is. And uh-huh. even if he doesn't really do a lot, um, like of stunts, I guess you, like stunt stunts, right? He doesn't really like he's got the party boy thing. Like I didn't really realize I always just thought he was one of the boys doing stunts just like everyone else. But yeah, not so much. Like I think the most extreme thing Pontius does in the TV show, at least, is when he almost gets into that fist fight when he's dressed up as the, as the devil. Oh, um, yeah. Keep God out of California. I'm not dissing Chris Pontius at all or saying like he he wasn't owning up. I just I think it actually speaks to the strength of his, his characters and his comedy. And that's really an integral part of the show that. Yeah, really stood out on this second rewatching. And uh, one other thing, I think you guys, maybe you'll agree, but um, Danger Aaron, Aaron mm. McGahey, for some reason, again, watching this as a kid, he, he always, I always thought he was one of those like C-list characters and no offense. Right. It's just for some reason, like maybe he didn't have a lot of um, pull in the show at the time, but like I didn't remember a lot of his stuff, but going back and watching it. I like a lot of the Aaron McGee stuff. Yeah. Um, so it's just, yeah, two things that for some reason there was a blank spot. Maybe it's just because as a kid, you're more mystified with like the Bam Margeras and the Knoxvilles and the, you know, the big names that everybody totally. knows. 
But you got to give some credit to those supporting roles in the cast because they really do a lot for the show. Yeah, two very good points. I think I think I, I totally agree with with uh, your assessment of Pontius, where it's like I he he's so good at just being around everyone that you forget he really doesn't hurt himself. The one there there was another stunt where he did the tandem bicycling with I think Danger Aaron actually to to tie those two together. Um, uh, and and he was like not there for it. He did. He's like I'm not supposed to be the one hurting myself. He's like I'm just there on set. And until he said that, until you start to see him in shows like uh, or, or or movies like Jackass Forever, you're like yeah he's just kind of a mascot in in a non-condescending way i mean that in a positive way because he's great at it yeah, no one else yeah. could do what he does and danger Aaron as well i agree i think there was such a tone uh from the other members of jackass towards him that just made you assume that he wasn't like he's like ah oh, whatever it's right. fucking it's Aaron because that's what they were saying but if you pay attention you're like oh this guy's great my biggest surprise is similar to that and i'm actually going to pinpoint it to a moment um, and I'm going to give two examples, both with two different people and for different reasons. I said from the outset that Dave England was always like my most underrated person. I always loved Dave England, but I didn't realize how great and integral and unique uh, urban kayaking was as a stunt. Urban kayaking, I think, is one of the greatest stunts Jackass has done because there are very few like it that combine something a little bit gnarly, something cool to watch, something dangerous with this character that da that that uh, Dave England used to play, where he was kind of this like new age extreme sport guy who was super excited about a sport that you knew would never take off and was really silly. That I I I didn't realize, but I was chasing the dragon of that moment for the rest of jackass and i never got it again and it came very early on in season one of jackass a fantastic stunt that i think they should have brought the vibe of back a little bit more and the other big surprise was uh the the history of plugs aka uh ryan dunn figuring out his character you know i totally forgot <laughs> yeah. how different he was in seasons yeah, yeah. one and two uh and even some of of jackass season three he really doesn't come into his own until Volume three, kind of, and the movies. Um, uh, but and that goes even further to show how much Johnny Knoxville and the thing we did the other week, the GQ interview. Yeah. How he literally said, and Dunn came out because Dunn's that guy you could always count on to mm -hmm. get things done, which right. if you were to base that phrase off what we saw from the first little bit. Never. Never in your wildest dreams. Yeah. And mm -hmm. he's getting that respect from the OG. Exactly. The guy that does everything. So he, he must have really picked himself up and and you know done what he had to do well and no speaking and, and speaking of uh, uh another another way to just kind of tie this all together because we're running a little bit low on time is i think we can all agree on this i always just kind of assumed johnny knoxville was the front man the singer therefore he was the the face of jackass but he is easily the most hardcore and the most deserving of being in that position I, I thought it was like the pretty face, a little charisma, this and that. Going back and seeing what exactly he does and how gnarly he actually is. Holy shit. That guy is a badass. Like, well-deserved to be in the position that he's in. Mm. I'm going to throw out a random question here. Yeah. Just out of the blue. What's up? And it might be controversial. Uh-oh. But it, I, I, And I'm asking for an honest... Does it have to do with CERN again? <laughs> no. Okay. No. That's not controversial. That's just fact. Okay, okay. Um, Steve-O. Yeah. We've seen a good chunk of sober Steve-O, mm -hmm. and we've seen a good chunk of fucked up Steve-O. Uh -huh. Not necessarily talking about what was happening behind the scenes and how it might have been affecting things that we don't really understand about. Which Steve-O do you think has brought the better stunts? Mm. Has brought the better stunts? That's so like hard if you to say. If you look back and you see like Steve-O's catalog of what he's done... It's, uh, Which one do you think is better? I know, I know personality, Steve-O, right now is a, a million times yeah. better. But I'm talking yes. pure gnarliness and those impactful stunts that we talk about yeah. forever. Like a, a real working man's perspective here. We're not mm -hmm. thinking about the personal life. Okay. I'm going to just have to say it. I think it's around the Jackass number two era, Steve-O, when he's doing shit like... He does a lot of shit outside that we haven't talked about yet in his own, like he has his own set of yes. videos and movies that are, they get pretty gnarly and pretty extreme. He was doing crazy, crazy shit, but I think that's what made him like a, a name 
I was going to say a household name, but I guess if you're a jackass fan, it's a household name, but like doing shit, like stapling his nutsack to his leg. And like, he was doing the wasabi snooters. I think about that a lot. And jackass number two, he had that whole, he, he if you remember, like Steve would just go on tour and book out stadiums and shit and just that do was that shit on stage. Yeah. Just do stunts and pranks and be super fucked up. And like, you don't want to see a guy that low and that fucked up, but at the same time, he had a lot of brilliance come from that period in his life. And I don't think you can deny that if you can call stapling your balls to your leg of brilliance, but, but you know what I mean? Like he was willing uh-huh. to do anything because of the state he was in. And in a way, if you're looking at it purely from, you know, I'm coming into jackass cause I want to see something ridiculous. I think that's probably the peak Steve-O. That being said, I would never want to see him go back to that ever again. Leave it in the past. It's done. And, uh, I think it's a good thing that it's over, but if you were there to experience it, like it was just wild. It's a sign of the times of like the way that the world was and what so many people were feeling and that you could book a show like that and sell it out is just wild to me. You know, I, um, I, I yeah. agree. I, I think though, that one thing you have to keep in mind, and this is something you can't separate from, from Steve-O post soap sobriety is that he also had gotten older. And that's one of the reasons why he got sober. So I think there's an element of like, that's why some of his stunts have have gone down a little bit, maybe in terms of intensity. And there's also just less content to look at. You, you know, you got all of Wild Boys, all of the original Jackass TV series, all of Jackass 1 and all of Jackass 2 for Steve-O while he was high. You got Jackass 3, 3.5 and Forever, his current tour and then like Wild Ride and stuff for sober and Steve-O his and, his, and his YouTube channel. I yeah. honestly though think like like I just pulled up on Reddit the top uh uh the top uh Stevo stunts and here's like a, a weird consensus there's a, are, are a bunch that show up on the list the fish hook which is great the new bikini I think that's a little bit overrated uh alligator snapping turtle the flaming gauntlet and poo cocktail supreme flaming gauntlet yeah, I think is his most gnarly stunt and he did that with no substance in fact he got so injured and he couldn't even take painkillers on it poo cocktail supreme also one of his most iconic stunts also when he was sober i i think there's an argument to be made that if not better he's at least just as good when he's sober and then you get the added benefit of his personality i prefer sober steve-o over over uh because okay here's another point do you remember in series two of jackass season two how much we disliked steve-o's appearances he was angry he he was phoning it in so you Mood can't swings, you can't yeah. strip out the bad from that you know i i think for every great stunt that you get from him you probably had one or two which weren't as as good and that was all oh, yeah, during the time and it directly owing to the fact that he was high or hung over yeah yeah, yeah, I, yeah, I think he is a significantly better version of himself these days. Yeah, mm-hmm. he's he's focused on business. He's got every different type of business plan. And and I was talking about in the draft about how Burt Kreischer is one of the best marketers and promoters. I said the, he might be able to do the only thing to market Jackass further other than maybe Steve-O because Steve-O is on his grind. He's focused. He's dedicated. And I love to see all that new stuff. And he's, it's not like he's toned down his shit. He still does some really gnarly shit. Right. It just, he has a better thought process behind all these things. The flip side of the coin is two of my favorite things he's ever done was the Steve-O out and bail tour when uh-huh. he was going around to all the shows. I saw it at the government in Toronto and it was a club that no longer exists. Yeah. The most fucking gnarly shit I've ever seen. Stapling nuts. They had fucking people coming up on stage, getting their dicks kicked. They had bouncers doing like ring around the rosy, knocking fucking kids down. It's just shit that you can never get away yeah. with today. I think in actually one of those things, unfortunately, some kid broke his neck in the process. Not in Toronto, but in one of the shows. Christ. So it just, it, it reminds me of this more free time where more things got away, which I, I do like, man. That's always been something about me. Mm-hmm. Um, and then he had the, the, the PCP Save My Life video where he's just a whack job going through Europe, just tripping fucking nuts, you know? So... I do like that side of things, but I feel like deep down we will be getting a lot better Steve-O content all around in the sober version of himself. Yeah, I think he's going to create an ecosystem yeah. around him. Like, look at look at how he's taken poopies under his wing and he's guiding him and he's giving him advice on his videos. And, and you can imagine he's doing that with there's going to be a crew that he builds up around him of people 
on whom he imparts his wisdom and his experience who are still just as crazy zach ass as well he's the guy mm. who dubbed zach Holmes zach ass you know he, oh, he he like made he like made made uh dave england do a you dave england's like i don't care about youtube channel he's like i'm gonna give you a video yeah yeah, yeah. i'm gonna tell all my subscribers to follow you you're gonna be big overnight just yeah. do this shit you know yeah. like he really wants to help people out in this way and really grow people's businesses like he is a far 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 better person so is is it from safe? the selfish oh, yeah. Point aside, like I miss some of the reckless shit because sure. yeah, I've always no, liked that. Of course, and I'm not living a reckless life anymore myself. So I'm actually more on that Stevo side of things, understanding these creativity things. But you still miss the wild days, you know 100%. what I mean? And it's and and there's there's something that you can't take away from that. And and I bet you, I know, it's I just bet a, you it was a, it's a question I go back and too. forth when. Yeah, like I bet you that that's still I, I, something. You that know he, what? I don't think he really yeah, does, man. I think but... he's so he's he's one of those people that have really reach the full potential of what sobriety could be sure and and his life has been significantly better since so mm -hmm. i think he's not yeah. even thinking back I, he's like one of the few people i don't think you ever have to worry about going back into those ways yeah. and and uh yeah he's just coming mm -hmm. up with wackier ideas it's that much harder to think of an idea that doesn't involve being fucked up or doing something True, like yeah, that yeah. And, yeah no i, well, I just I'm, I'm loving what he's doing these days is basically what i wanted to say and see if you guys agreed yep right I think when you're that low <clears throat> and then you climb up out of that hole and you get back up, you know, to where he is now and you're, you look back at that, that's actually what makes, I think, his appreciation for life so much more vivid mm -hmm. to him and more, uh, like you can tell he cares. You can tell it means something to him. I'm sure every day he wakes up, he's thankful that he's here because like yeah. he went through so much shit and he put himself through so much shit. And I think like going back to the, the initial question that we posed if you're removing that segment, though, like all the personal shit and you're just looking at the stunts. Yeah, Chris, you're right. There's something there that's that's gone now that you can't do anymore these days. Um, and if it was coming from a completely blank slate and we didn't know about all the trauma and the shit he was going through, it's like, you know what? There is something special there that more than anything, when I look at that time period, it's something I don't know if we'll ever quite get again. And I'm OK we with that. But wow, it's fascinating just to open that door and like peer in there and be like, what the fuck was like happening? And not just Steve-O's mind, but the people, like the culture at the time. The world that, like, was weird back then, man. Dude, it's so bizarre. No, it wasn't weird. It was normal. It. The world's weird now. <laughs> it, Chris, we're talking yeah. about people like shoving shit in their dick holes and like putting <laughs> hooks in their mouth. Is that normal? Exactly. Like, what are we talking is, about? Though, if you look exactly. at the, if you look at the path, it's like people are generally fairly normal and reserved in like you know I don't know the eighties and like part of the nineties, and then all of a sudden we hit this point as the two thousands approach where it's just like this fucking weird wasteland where like the rules no longer apply and yep. people are angry and it's anarchy, and now we've kind of come back out of that dip mm -hmm. and we're starting like I would say we're normal nowadays by any stretch, but it's like that kind of shit doesn't really like happen in the public mainstream anymore and i don't know if that's good or bad i'm not here to comment on that but i'm just fascinated by it and to finalize this on mikey's point yes steve-o is still kicking ass the poo cocktail supreme we haven't covered it yet and i'll have to save my rating until i actually watch it one more time yeah. but that's probably going to be one of my favorite stunts so yeah yes i know that i know that about you jay i figured any kind of steve-o is good steve-o i i don't think steve-o's ever done he hasn't done much that hasn't been either just totally like memorable or or fascinating in some way so i you know i'm i'm excited to see like you guys are where he's gonna take things moving forward for sure and yeah that's our steve-o rant that was pretty that's good, our steve-o like rant that. you know uh uh whatever we get from steve-o is is good steve-o as you said and as we've proven on uh this episode whatever we get on the jackass podcast is good jackass content uh just a little bit of riffing a little bit of uh, our thoughts on the future past and present of jackass uh look i love having these sorts of conversations and we will pepper these in in and among some of our our longer stretches of projects if you have any questions or comments that you want to add to it that we can discuss on the show hit us up at jackass pod on twitter or instagram Instagram or uh, send us an email jackasspod at gmail.com uh, boys anything to say before we take off uh, I would say that on that last point we made too about the chaos and the anarchy of the mid 2000s there 
we might have said this before, but Jackass couldn't have existed at any other time. So if you think about this, the fact that we're here doing this podcast right now is a fucking miracle because Jackass itself is like a once in a lifetime shot. It's like, true, you know, true. the fucking meteorite struck the earth and uh, <laughs> fucking created new life at just the right time. And, uh, and we it came up and it birthed us somehow. It birthed yeah. us somehow. And uh, yeah, I just, yeah, I, Again, the fact that we're even sitting here talking about dudes who like made a fucking living and a life out of just hurting themselves and making people laugh is it's pretty crazy. But um, hey, if anybody ever tells you you can't live your dream or you can't achieve <laughs> something, just look at these guys and there's all the inspiration you need, I think. That's what we're doing. We're living our dream. We're, we're living just trying our dream, to do a podcast on here. Uh, Jay, you want to uh, you want to lead us <laughs> off here? Yeah. Uh, until next week. Bye. I'm Jason Wellwood. Bye. I'm Chris Aaronworth. Bye, I'm Mikey Aaronworth, and this has been Jackassed. Jay, your voice sounded different than last week when you were signing out. <laughs>